Welcome back. It's Christmas Day and we're about to take a road trip from New Jersey up to Vermont to visit the in-laws for Christmas. And we're doing it in my 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning Extended Range Lariat Trim. And why does that matter? Well, that's because a lot's been made of electric vehicle driving range in the winter and particularly the Lightning. The Lightning's a new EV that's just come out and a lot of people are concerned about winter range. There's been a lot of talk about how the range can be reduced dramatically in the winter, which is true. So we're gonna hop in this guy today and see if it'll make the 205 mile trek to my in-laws now that it's cold out. Now in summer months, that would be no problem. I average about 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour in normal driving with the Lightning and it has 131 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's the usable capacity. So I average somewhere around 300 miles of range for daily driving. I did a 70 mile an hour highway range test where I fully recharge it, get on the highway, drive 70 miles an hour until the battery's nearly depleted, so there's only maybe a mile or two left in it and uh, see how far it goes. And this guy went 270 miles at a constant 70 miles an hour. But that was in warm weather. It's different now that it's cold. All electric vehicles have their range reduced when it's cold outside. The batteries just can't perform as well as they do when they're warm. And also, now you're also using heat to warm the cabin and that drains a little bit of extra energy. So what I did was I pulled it into the garage last night, plugged it in, fully charged it to 100% overnight, and I also set the preconditioning. So the battery should be nice and warm now, as is the cabin, and ready for us to take off. Now, if you don't do that, as soon as you hop in the vehicle, it's cold. The battery's cold, cabin is cold, even if it's in a garage, because garages aren't as warm as inside of your house. So you immediately have to turn on that heat and you're wasting energy to warm the cabin. My cabin's nice and warm now, the battery's warmed up, so we should be in a good position to go. Now it is cold. We've had a cold stretch here in the Northeast. Well, the whole country has. Um, since I think three or four days ago, they called the bomb cyclone came down from Canada and some areas of, uh, I think Colorado was like negative 30 degrees. It's not that cold here, but it was one degree yesterday when I woke up. It's warmed up now and it was 15 degrees when I woke up. It's a balmy 17 degrees now as we leave. And as I head up to Vermont, the temperature should be dropping because it is colder up there. Right now up there, it's six degrees, but it's gonna warm up a little bit as we go. So there's a couple of factors here that we need to talk about. Besides the fact that it's cold, I'll be doing almost all highway driving, which the faster you go, that also eats into your range. So we have the cold, we have high speed. I also just put on BF Goodrich KO2 all-terrain tires with a very aggressive tread on this. So that in itself would probably knock 15 to 20 miles of range off the line. I haven't driven it enough with these new tires to know exactly how much it's going to hurt, but we're gonna find out today. Then to make matters worse, the last 25 miles of this trip, we gained over a thousand feet in altitude. So we've got cold weather, we've got highway speeds, we've got aggressive all-terrain tires, we've got an elevation change, everything working against us here. I'm gonna to try to make it on one charge, but if it looks like we're not gonna make it, I'm gonna pull into a DC fast charge station. We'll talk about that when I do that. I'm gonna give some updates as we're driving. Um, I'm not gonna run out and ruin Christmas, but if I think I can make it, I think I might push it. Here's the thing, we're fully charged now. And the Lightning is telling me it has 207 miles of range. We're going about 205 miles. And I don't know if the truck has adjusted for the new tires yet. I haven't had these on long. So it might think we're still running with the general grabbers that come with the vehicle and have a much, say, less aggressive tread. These, these tires, the KO2s, definitely are going to have uh, more rolling resistance. So we've got a lot of things working against us, but let's have fun with this. We're gonna hop in the truck now and head out, see if we can make it. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please click that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews.
This video is sponsored by QMerit, North America's largest network of electric vehicle charging station installation professionals. All right, so we're out on the highway now, heading up to Vermont for Christmas. I'm here with my lovely wife, Meredith. Hi everyone, Merry Christmas. I think this might be the first time that you made it into one of my videos. I think you might be right. <laughs> you know, I like to stay behind the scenes. Exactly. She's, she's doing all the work behind the scenes that you guys don't see. Any event, so I want to talk a little bit about what I did to set the vehicle up for this drive. And like anything, preparation means a lot, particularly in cold weather driving with electric vehicles. Oh, by the way, I have my uh, Blue Cruise set, which I really like on here, hands-free Blue Cruise. I've been using it pretty much the whole way. So the first about 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 miles miles of this trip were on back roads for me to get out onto the highway uh, and they were at lower speeds probably um, 40 45 miles an hour but since then we've been on the highway I have the uh, Blue Cruise at 70 miles an hour so we're cruising along at 70 miles an hour the first uh, 10 miles or so there was some traffic so we we're probably only going about 60 to 65 miles an hour but now that we're on 87 we're going about 70 miles an hour and every now and then a little bit slower actually right now I'm going a little bit slower because I'm in the slow lane and I'm behind a Prius so what I'm gonna do is get out around this guy because he's going 60 miles an hour the speed limit is uh, 65 here so uh, we're going just slightly over but uh, the flow of traffic here is like 75 miles an hour about when we drive up to Vermont we frequently go about 75 miles an hour so I'm going a little bit slower than I usually do but um, really in no rush uh, to get up there an extra 15 minutes earlier we're gonna be up there for a few days so I think by keeping it at 70 miles an hour I might make it now we've been driving for an hour and we've covered 56 miles and I'm averaging 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour I'll put that in perspective. When I did my 70 mile an hour highway range test with the Lightning, I averaged 2.1 mile per kilowatt hour. Finished up with 270 miles, but we weren't completely dead. And if you multiply the 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour by the 131 kilowatt hour usable in the Lightning, that should have made us go 275. So, you know, I pretty much exhausted the battery on that range test. What I'm expecting here today is somewhere around 1.6, 1.7. We're averaging 1.7 so far. And the 1.6 is critical because with driving about 200, 205 miles, and at the end, once we get up there, there's an alternate route that I might be able to take to shave a few miles off. So I might be able to finish up right around 200 miles. In any event, I need to average 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour to make it. And that's why I'm watching this closely. For a while, in the beginning, we were averaging 1.8. Now it's down to 1.7. Part of that might be because we're, uh, where we're driving now, we have some wind. Uh, there's been somewhere between 12 and 15 mile an hour winds coming from the west. And I can feel the gusts every now and then. It pushes the truck, and then the Blue Cruise corrects it. So um, there's some wind out there today, which is to be expected. It is the winter, and there's typically winds up around here. But I'm keeping an eye on that because if it gets much worse than 12, 15 miles an hour, it's going to really knock my consumption down uh, a little bit further. And as I said, 1.6 is the is is what we need to average. And I have to also consider the last 25 miles or so, we're going to be gaining a thousand feet of elevation. So I need to get to that point um, at 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which we're at now. If that drops to 1.6, I don't think we'll make it. And uh, once we get to that last 25 miles or so, there's very little options to charge. So I'm going to be monitoring this. I'm going to check back in uh, maybe in about an hour to see where we're at. And at that point, I'm going to decide if I need to pull over for, I mean, it would be literally a five or 10 minute stop to just add another five, 10 percent battery and then keep going. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the goal is to make it there on one charge, but not at the expense of running out three miles before we reach my in-laws house and having to call them up and call a tow truck and all that stuff. Not worth it. So uh, let's see. We're going to check back in uh, in about an hour. The only last 
last thing I'll add is, as far as heat, having the car preconditioned made such a difference. You know, having the cabin nice and warm, I was able to just set it to 70 miles an hour on fan, fan speed one, uh, on auto. Uh, the first I had it on fan speed one, then I just put it on auto. But I do have the e-heat on, which is the electric heat. The lightning gives you the option of turning off the uh, the e-heat, the e which then um, dramatically reduces the amount of cabin heat you get. And when I turned it off, I turned it off actually yesterday to do some tests. There was like no heat coming into the cabin. It was just blowing like cold air. So I don't even know why that function is there. I can't seem to get it to work and actually provide heat. So we have the resistive heater on, keeping the cabin nice and warm. And all those things I've done, uh, parking it in my garage overnight, preconditioning, setting the tire pressure properly, those things can really help you extend your winter range. So we're hoping to make this without having to stop and charge. Talk to you in about an hour and we'll see where we're at. All righty. We're cruising along at 70 miles an hour here. We're past the 50% state of charge. We're down to 49% state of charge. I've driven 117 miles. We're still averaging 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour. Now the estimated range remaining is 91 miles, but we only have to go about 82 more miles. So we're on course to make it, and I think I'm gonna go for it. I think we're gonna give it a shot. Now, Meredith isn't gonna be happy if we don't make it. I'll be kind of upsetting Christmas Day plans. She's holding the camera right now, so um, don't kill me if we're calling a tow truck like two miles from your dad's house. <laughs> She's not amused. Um, but that, this is the life that she's chosen, living with somebody who does electric vehicle range testing and videos and all this stuff. She's still not amused. I know you can't see, she's off camera. Any event, um, we're gonna go for it. And uh, there's uh, some uh, chargers in Albany area, but once we pass that, we're kind of stuck. And I uh, think we're gonna make it, but I think I'm gonna also give it a shot and hopefully we'll, we'll be there. Now, one of the things that I have to mention is around the Kingston area, we did hit a little bit of a traffic jam. So for like five miles, we went down to like 62 to 65 miles an hour. That helped me. So we're maintaining that 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour. If that had dropped to 1.6 before we got to the point where I know we have a thousand foot elevation climb, I would have bailed and plugged in somewhere for just five or 10 minutes and kept going. But um, since we're holding steady at this 1.7, I'm pretty sure we're gonna make it. So um, uh, famous last words. Blue Coos is reminding me that I'm not looking at the road. So um, yeah, we have uh, somewhere about 80 miles to go and uh, I'm gonna check in once we get past Albany and we're off 87 and we're on that climb to see how we're looking uh, consumption wise. And uh, I'm gonna be monitoring that because if it drops down to 1.6 while we're kind of in the beginning of that climb, we might not make it. <laughs> so stay tuned, check back in in a few. All right, so we're off the highway now and on secondary roads and we're beginning that thousand foot climb that I was talking about at the end of the trip. Now we are at 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour. We held that almost the whole way on the highway, which I'm impressed with. I'm very happy that the Lightning driving at 65 to 70 miles an hour, because the whole way we were bouncing between 65 and 70 miles an hour, depending on traffic and so forth. Um, we had another little slowdown in the Albany area, so for a few minutes we were driving like 65 miles an hour. To be able to average 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour with 15 mile an hour winds, and on these new BF Goodrich KO2, very aggressive all-terrain tires, over the course of 170 miles at this point, that's pretty impressive. 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour, I'll take that any day. In the winter, we started out, it was 17 degrees, it's up to 24 degrees now, so the temperature's been climbing a little bit during the day, because now it's in the afternoon. Um, all those things considered, wind, tires, speed, 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour on the highway, I'll take that any day of the week in the winter. Now in the summer, I average like 
2.1, 2.2 for the same trip. But as we said earlier, all electric vehicles, they're just not as efficient in the, in the winter, in the cold temperatures as they are in the summer. All right, so we're gonna keep moving. We got about 30 miles to go and uh, we're gonna do a little wrap up when we're done. But at this point, I'm confident that we're gonna make it and we're gonna have a little bit of range left over. All right, well, we did make it. Meredith already bailed on me. She's inside and I'm doing a little bit of a wrap up here. As we pulled up the driveway, we ended up with 210 miles driven. I actually took an alternate route. Once I realized we were gonna make it, I took another route that added like five more miles onto the trip because I wanted to see what we would end up with. So we're showing five miles of range left. We did finish up with 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour. We hit 1.6 for a brief period, but then we started going downhill for a little while after we made our initial big climb and then it jumped back up to 1.7. So we finished with 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour. It is 17 degrees, the same temperature it was when we left New Jersey, but during the day it did warm up for a little bit. Let's take a look at what the state of charge is left here. And settings, charge, we've got 3% state of charge. So we used 97% state of charge, went just about 211 miles, 210.9 miles, and average 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour. Let me turn this phone around now and clip it on here. All right, so let's summarize this. We went about 211 miles. When I left this morning, it was 17 degrees Fahrenheit. It got up to about 25 degrees Fahrenheit in the middle of the drive. Now we're back down to 17 degrees Fahrenheit. We climbed about 1,100 feet in elevation from the beginning of the trip to the end of the trip. Most of that was really the last 25, 30 miles. Um, I'm running on the uh, BF Goodrich KO2 all-terrain tires that have a very aggressive tread. I'm sure they increased rolling resistance. The last five or six miles was on uh, snow-covered roads that were unpaved roads. So I actually thought that was going to push the, uh, the consumption uh, down a little bit, but it didn't. Uh, it actually held at 1.7 at the end. Um, what else? We finished up with... Uh, 3% state of charge and about five miles remaining estimated, but I still think, I think we can get close to 10 miles here. I really think I could, I could have done 220 here today. I've, I've driven the Lightning enough now at very low state of charge that I kind of know what I'm gonna be able to get towards the end. There was winds today, uh, the whole trip, we had a winds between 12 miles an hour and 15 miles an hour, westerly winds that were pushing the truck at times as we were driving along. Uh, we the whole, Nearly the whole trip, except the very beginning and the very end, we drove somewhere between 65 miles an hour and 70 miles an hour. Again, I knocked it down a little bit. Normally when I do this drive, I drive about 75 miles an hour, but to me that was worth it. It took us an extra 20 minutes to get here, but we're here for three days. That 20 minutes really doesn't matter. Now it might be a different situation if you're working and you gotta get somewhere by a certain time, but if you can slow down a little bit, it really helps your range, particularly when it's windy and in the winter. All right, so that's it for today. I'd like to wish the whole State of Charge and Inside EVs community a happy holiday season, a very happy, healthy, and electric 2023, and I'll see you then. So bonus footage, we've made it back home to New Jersey and this time I did all the driving. We averaged 1.8 miles per kilowatt hour and we have 10% state of charge and 17 miles of range remaining. Happy New Year everyone! <laughs>